This is a simple tutorial on how to install and use Monster Generator. Monster Generator is a program that will allow you to create Pathfinder monsters for D&D very easily. It'll calculate all the stats for you, um, so you don't actually have to do all the math or anything, and you can just decide what powers to give them and stuff. Anyway, I'm here on SourceForge, where you can download it for free. Uh, so I'm going to click on the latest version and that will allow you to download it. Now it uses Java 7 to run so if you don't actually have Java 7 on your computer um, you will also need to install that. I'll have a link to download that down below. So we can just go to our downloads folder and unzip it. Now that it's unzipped you don't actually have to install it. You can just open it and then click on the .jar file and that will launch the program. Once you open the program, it will display the first menu. Using the first menu, you can specify the monster's name, their type, the monster's size, and their body type. You can also specify any subtypes the monster should have and set their alignment. After that, you want to go over and set their intended challenge rating, and then how many hit dice they should have. So we'll start out by giving our monster a name. And then we're going to set his type. We'll set this one to Magical Beast. Once you set their type, it will automatically set their body type. You can see that it made him a quadruped. You can change it to whatever you want afterwards, so we'll actually make him a serpentine body type. Then we're going to set his size. We'll make him size large. Let's give him the elemental subtype as well. Let's set him to lawful neutral. I'm going to put him as challenge rating 10. And then click on recommended hit dice. Recommended hit dice is probably the one that you should use the most because it will give them the most balanced amount for their challenge rating and their size. After that, you want to click on the next button. Once you click on that, it will enable the second menu. It will calculate how many attribute points and feats and skills powers they should have based on the selections you made in the first menu. Let's spend the attribute points for our monster. You can add attributes by clicking on the plus two button next to each attribute. You can also subtract from an attribute by clicking on the minus two button. If you try to increase an attribute too high, it'll turn red. This is to stop you from giving a monster one score that's too high for their challenge rating. Next, let's add the feats to our monster. You can click on this menu and then scroll down until you find a feat you want. So let's give him Deceitful. Then you can click on Add Feat. That'll add it to their current feats menu. If you change your mind, you can click on the feat that you added and click Remove Feat. That'll take it out of your menu and give you your feat back so you can take a different one. Alternatively, you can click on the Use Recommended Feats button. This will use up all of your feats and give you feats that are recommended for this type of monster. The list isn't really a catch-all, but you can modify it to your liking by modifying the text files. Uh, there are more details on that in the readme file. You can do the same thing for skills, so we'll give him bluff. You can see that it's on his current skills menu now. Next, let's move down to the powers menu. You can see that they already have powers because he got powers from his type and his subtype. The elemental subtype gave him bleed immunity and paralysis immunity and all these other things. That's what also spent some of his points to start with. But you can spend the remaining seven. So under special attacks, we'll scroll down until we find breath weapon, and then we'll give him that. Under defenses, let's give him damage reduction 10 over bludgeoning. Now, it only says five over bludgeoning, but it can stack when you add it multiple times. So it's on the menu twice down here and on the monster's printout it will display as damage reduction 10 over bludgeoning. 
For his last three power points, we can go down here and click on Add Attack. This will allow you to ha have another attack that you can specify for the monster. When you click on the Choose Attack button, you can specify what attack you want the monster to have there. If you want a monster to have a normal attack with a weapon, you should specify it as their first attack, the one in the upper left. So we'll give him a longsword. And then for his secondary attacks down here, we'll give him two slams, because he has multiple limbs. These other boxes are just text boxes that you can fill in with whatever you want. Once you're finished filling in their information, you can click on the Print Monster Stats button down in the lower right. There are radio buttons above it for which format you want to print the stats in. You can print it in either Pathfinder format or 3.5 format. Uh, the Pathfinder format is the one used on the website and in their books. And the 3.5 format is the one used in D&D 3.5's Monster Manual. We'll leave it on Pathfinder format for now. Printability text will print out a long version of every ability that the monster has. So it would print out the description for their abilities like their breath weapon. Uh, randomized spells will pick random spells for the monster if they can cast spells. There are more menu options up here for ignore AP cap and ignore PP cap. These will allow you to spend attributes and powers beyond normal limit. So if you were to click on ignore AP cap, you could keep spending and it would go into negative attribute points. We'll click on Print Monster Stats, and this will give us a printout of our monster. It prints it out in a text document, which you can easily highlight, and copy and paste it into a different program. You can also change things about the monster to your liking. See, it has fire damage with his breath weapon right here. We can easily change that to acid damage. As a dungeon master that likes to surprise their players, I find that Monster Generator saves me about an hour of time per monster that I make, which is pretty significant. It's also nice to not have to calculate their things like attack bonuses or damage, or their save DCs for their abilities, because the program will just do all of that for you. So I definitely recommend giving it a try in your campaign. Have fun!